think the global market in the Middle East is really growing. I think not only from the perspective of end items that they purchase, but also from the perspective of, of uh, gaining insight into new technologies, developing and designing new technologies, and then also producing those, those products on their own. In the past couple of years, we've been really successful in, in generating partnerships in the Middle East for the co-development and co-production of some of our legacy systems that are U.S. qualified systems that are now being produced here, that will be produced here in the Middle East. I think one of the most important things is, first of all, to, uh, to realize or recognize whether or not you have uh, legacy systems or, or ammunition systems that are relevant for what their current needs are or what their future needs are. And then you also partner up with local uh, manufacturing capabilities here in the Middle East or uh, with the, the different agencies that they, they have that uh, uh, produce the ammunition here. We match our uh, ammunition capabilities to the type of platforms that they have, whether it be an Apache helicopter or uh, a medium caliber uh, armed vehicle. Uh, we match our ammunition to those those types of requirements. One of the one of the products that we have that's been a, a very uh, dominant uh, product for us has been the lightweight 30 ammunition, which is the ammunition that's used in the Apache helicopter, and so. Uh, many of our allies here have Apache helicopters that they use and so we're helping them establish that production capability here for their own use but then also that ammunition is now being applied to land uses uh, with some of our own cannons that we're, we're bringing here and applying to land applications and maritime applications and so they'll be able to apply that lightweight 30 ammunition uh, to those those uses as well. I think that there will be a continued uh, demand for uh, indigenous production capability. I think that is going to increase. I think there will also be an increase in interest in designing and developing new types of ammunition, new types of systems. And then I also think that there will be a focus, a, a very strong focus on precision as, uh, as we seek to minimize collateral damage uh, in, uh, in engagements. And I think because of the, uh, the complexity of what you see in battlefields today or, or engagements today, I think that there's a definite need to eliminate collateral damages, whether it be uh, by air or by land, uh, because many of those involve urban type engagements. And so if you look at what we can do from a precision standpoint, on the ammunition side with medium caliber, it's the air bursting so you can put the round right where you want it so that it will detonate in a very precise location. Uh, and then if you use that same type of, of precision technology and apply that to artillery or mortars, we're able to convert legacy products in many cases into precise um, precision strike type applications and eliminate uh, collateral damage as well. And I think that's probably the biggest concern for customers and for uh, sovereign states today is, is just making sure that uh, collateral damage is, is minimized. If you look at medium caliber ammunition, for instance, we have an air bursting uh, ammunition that is turns counting. And so you can very precisely set where that ammunition will burst uh, based on turns counted. Then we also have um, our artillery uh, fusing capability that goes into a legacy 155 artillery or a 120 millimeter mortar and you can replace the, uh, the legacy fuse with a precision fuse that you can then set and allow it to go off in a very precise location.